السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم
السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دی انگلش ٹرانسلیشن آف سور النحل ورسز نائنٹی ٹو اینڈ نائنٹی تھری جسٹ ریسائٹیڈ بفور یو از ایز فالوز آئی سیک ریفیوج ود اللہ فرام سیٹ ان دی اکیسٹ ان دا نیم آف اللہ دا گریشیس دی ایور مرسیفل اینڈ فلفل دی کوونٹ آف اللہ وین یو ہیو میڈ اینڈ بریک ناٹ دی اوتھس after making them firm, while you have made Allah your surety. Certainly, Allah knows what you do. And be not like unto her, who after having made it strong, breaks her yarn into pieces. You make your oaths a means of deceit between you, for fear lest one people become more powerful than another. Surely, Allah tries you therewith, and on the day of resurrection, He will make clear to you that wherein you differed. Jazakallah. اشهد الله لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اشهد الله لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اشهد الله لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اي بير ويتنس ذات ذير از نان ورثي اوف ورشپ اكسبت الله هي از ون اند هاز نو پارتنر اند اي بير ويتنس ذات محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم از هيز سيرفنت اند مسنجر I solemnly pledge that I shall always be ready to sacrifice my life, wealth, time, and honor for the sake of my faith, country, and nation. Likewise, I shall be ready to offer any sacrifice for guarding the institution of Khilafat-e-Ahmadiyya. Moreover, I shall deem it essential to abide by any maruf decision made by Khalifat al-Masih. Inshallah. Please sit down. اجازت چیما نظم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ کلام حضرت مسیح محمود علیہ صلاۃ وسلام جو خاک میں ملے اسے ملتا ہے آشنا جو خاک میں ملے اسے ملتا 
आशिक जो है वो यार को मर मर के पाते हैं आशिक जो है वो यार को मर मर के पाते हैं जब मर गए तो इस की तरफ खेचे जाते हैं जिंदा वही हैं जो के खुदा के करीब हैं जिंदा वही हैं जो के खुदा के करीब हैं मकबूल बन के ओ से अजीजो हबीब हैं तकवा यही जारो के नखवत को छोड़ दो तकवाज ही है जारो के नखवत को छोड़ दो किबरो गुरु रो बोखल की आदत को छोड़ दो किबरो गुरु रो बोखल की आदत को छोड़ दो जो खाक में मिले उसे मिलता है आशना आज माने वाले ये नुस्खा भी आजमा इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन अब्दुल गालिब खान सलामिक The English translation of the couplets written by the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam is as follows That deer is found by him who stoops to dust O ye who are trying pray try this recipe too The lovers find their beloveds through a hundred deaths after their death they are drawn unto the beloved Only they are alive who are close to God being accepted they are his dear and loved ones friends 
Piety is that you give up arrogance, give up the habit of pride, haughtiness and stinginess. Jazakallah. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Beloved Huzur, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu By the grace of Allah, we have now arrived at the concluding session of this year's National Ijtima A brief summary report is as follows The theme of this year's Ijtima that is given to us by Huzur Akhtas is honouring our pledge A theme that was followed in all our local and regional Ijtima'at It is only with Allah's grace and mercy and Hazur's continued guidance and prayers that we have been able to set up and hold an ijtama at this site in Kingsley, Hampshire. My beloved Hazur, Alhamdulillah, this year the ijtama site, team comprised of young professionals who have dedicated their time in putting the site layout together. I would like to thank them and the Ziafa team that have been working hard behind the scenes. I would also like to thank the UK Jamaat Jalsa Salana Management and MTA International teams for all their support in helping us achieve this. Beloved Hazur, some highlights of this year's ijtima include a virtual reality experience of Makkah and Medina and exhibitions about the theme of the ijtima. Further exhibitions on the book Mashal and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II were on display. A book of condolence was also signed by many khudam and atfal that will be presented to the royal family, inshallah. Apart from the academic competitions, attendees were also able to benefit from the hub Dirbiyat Maki, where various mental and physical challenges were run. In addition to these, separate academic competitions were held for new Ahmadis. Beloved Hazur, as per your guidance this year, we held the Academic Excellence Awards for 143 students, which were presented by respected Amri Sub UK. There was a special area created outdoor for talks this year around a campfire in the evenings, which was greatly enjoyed by all. The Atfal team held amusing science experiments and workshops to help encourage Atfal to excel in academic excellence based on Hazur's challenge set to the Majlis last year. Further initiatives such as the Mu'akha Challenge, the Young Mu'avineen Championship were also run for Atfal. Alhamdulillah, after a gap of two years with, with Hazur Akhtas' invaluable guidance, we were once again able to hold the ijtama at full scale, whilst also adhering to COVID safety protocols. My beloved Hazur, by the sheer mercy and grace of Allah Ta'ala, the attendance this year is 5,719. I would like to thank all the members of the ijtama committee, led by Naib Sadr Usman Ahmed Saib, who is the Nazmi Allah for this year's ijtama. On behalf of the Majlis, I would like to thank Hazur Anwar for the love and affection he has shown to us by gracing us all with his presence. We pray that Allah gives us the capacity to fulfill our obligations and exceed the expectations of our beloved Hazur. In this regard, on behalf of the Majlis, I request Hazur's continuous prayers for the Majlis, that we always work in accordance with the vision and directors of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih. Lastly, I would like to thank Hazur again for his continued prayers and guidance to the Majlis. Beloved Hazur, with your permission, we will now like to play a short video showing highlights of the Ijtima. I'm 
बदम दोस्तों देखो रुकने न पाए कदम दोस्तों देखो रुकने न पाए कदम दोस्तों आगे बढ़ते रहो दम बदम दोस्तों जो खिलाफत के दामन को था रहे रहमतों की कबाए भी पा जाएंगे इसकी रसी को मजबूत पकड़ेंगे जो नुसरतों की रिदाए भी पा जाएंगे देख लेंगे ये अहल सितम दोस्तों आगे बढ़ तो आगे बढ़ते रहो दम बदम दोस्तों देखो रुकने न पाए कदम दोस्तों देखो रुकने न पाए कदम दोस्तों आगे बढ़ते रहो दम बदम दोस्तों ahmed <laughs> for the year 2020 to 2021 alme nami winner for atfal alam dia is wimbledon park kyadat barakallahu lakum Alme Nami Wena Khudam Alam Dia is Milton Keynes Kyadat. Allah, this weekend, Mr. Khuda Amul Ahmadiyya, UK has been able to hold its national ijtama on a large scale for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Originally, Mr. 
خدا ملہم دیا ہیڈ انکلوڈیڈ اے فل اسپورٹس پروگرامس ان دا اجتماع پروگرام ہائی اوور اپون دا سیڈ ڈیمائس آف ہر میجسٹری کوئین الزبتھ آئی انسٹرکٹر صدر صاحب دا اسپورٹس اینڈ گیمس بی اسکیلڈ بیک ایز اے مارک آف رسپیکٹ I deemed it essential because the Queen was our long-serving head of state and she led the nation with great dignity and justice for over 70 years. During her reign, the United Kingdom remained a beacon of religious freedom in the world. Indeed, the Queen herself advocated for true religious freedom and interfaith harmony on many occasions. Thus, we are grateful to have lived under such a gracious monarch. As Ahmadi Muslims, we should be particularly appreciative of the fact that we were given the opportunity to establish our Jamaat's international headquarters after the migration of Hathalif Masih IV, Ramallah Ta'ala, in the United Kingdom during the reign of Queen Elizabeth and have been able to practice and propagate our religion, Islam, freely. In this regard, we will always be grateful to Queen Elizabeth, the British government, and this nation. Furthermore, we pray that our new head of state, King Charles III, continues to ensure that religious freedom and justice for all people remains a hallmark of this nation and that the rights of the people are always fulfilled. Anyway, I hope and pray that all of the participants will have taken great benefit from the various academic programs and other events that did take place at the Ishtama. Today, in this concluding session, I wish to mention some of the fundamental responsibilities and obligations of members of Majlis Khudam al Above all, you must never forget that the true purpose for which Allah the Almighty created human was for his worship. And in this regard, the primary form of worship are the five daily prayers, that is Salat or Namaz. Anyone who calls themselves a Muslim must pay great attention to ensuring that they protect and guard their worship, which requires them to be regular <clears throat> and punctual in offering namaz with utmost sincerity. <clears throat> the reason Allah the Almighty has made namaz obligatory is because a person cannot remain spiritually alive without it. In, all, in other words, Salat is, is, is indispensable and person's faith and spirituality cannot survive without it. With the grace of Allah, many young Ahmadis are very diligent in offering namaz and have developed a personal connection with Allah the Almighty. I have observed such a spirit within many young Ahmadis. I have met or it has become apparent through their letters to me. Yet there is no room for complacency regarding the worship of Allah the Almighty. We must never let our standards slight. We must continuously seek to improve and strengthen our connection with our Creator. 
just as our physical bodies require food and air, in the same way our need, our, our souls need continuous spiritual nourishment. Often people submit and bow down before Allah the Almighty with great fervor and humility. Humility when faced with difficulty or when they require something. However, as soon as their problems are resolved, their spiritual intensity quickly diminishes and they become lazy and lose focus on, uh, in their prayers. Their spiritual state changes like the weather. Sometimes it is warm, sometimes it is cold, sometimes the wind blows in one direction, sometimes in another. Sometimes after a period of hot weather, there is a torrent of rain or a cool breeze which serves as a source of temporary relief and joy but is not a lasting player. Thus, just as a person is in perpetual need of air, food, and water, in the same way, if a person wishes to remain spiritually alive, they must ensure that they constantly nourish their soul through Salat. Hence, throughout your lives, Namaz should be the one constant companion that you never let go of. Moreover, Muslims are commanded by Allah the Almighty to come together to offer their prayers in congregation. During the last few years due to COVID, our mosques were closed or access was restricted. And Jamaat members were instructed to offer prayers in congregation at home. Thankfully, the situation has improved and we are once again able to hold our Jalsa, Ijtama and other functions. Government restrictions have ended and in terms of their day-to-day -day worldly activities, people have resumed their normal lives to a large extent. At the same time, having developed the habit of praying at home, some people are continuing to do so, rather than coming to the mosque or Salat center. They should realize that offering namaz at home was a temporary solution at the height of the pandemic, akin to administering oxygen to help a sick person breathe. Now, as the situation is, alhamdulillah, much improved, it is necessary to return to the proper means of spiritual salvation. As per the command of Allah, the Almighty, which requires Muslim men to be regular in offering congregational prayer in their local mosques or salat centers as much as possible. Always keep in mind that namaz is the key ingredient for a person to live a moral life. It protects people from immorality and vice and drives them towards righteous and noble acts. It is the foremost means of fulfilling the purpose of our creation and of enabling us to attain the blessings and rewards of Allah the Almighty. Otherwise, without prayer and worship, our claim of being part of a righteous community of having accepted the Imam of the age and being firm in faith are rendered meaningless and hollow. As I have said 
the worship of Allah, namely through namaz, inspire us towards good and fulfillment of the rights of Allah, the Almighty, and of His creation. It is a great favor of Allah, the Almighty, that He has blessed our Jamaat with many in sincere with many sincere people of all ages ever ready for any duty, assistance, or sacrifice. Whenever called upon, they immediately respond by saying, we are here and ready, the back, and present, and present themselves for whatever service or sacrifice is required for their faith. For example, just recently, thousands of Ahmadis, men, women, and children presented themselves for duty at the UK Jalsa and, act, and uh, set aside their everyday work and routine for the sake of the Jamaat. And to some extent, the same happened during the preparation of this Ishtama. Many did not sleep properly for days or even weeks. But never once did they neglect their duties or express any sense of frustration or fatigue. Similarly, when it comes to financial sacrifice in the way of Allah, there are countless Ahmadis worldwide who contribute wholeheartedly whenever any scheme is launched and make great sacrifices in order to pay and uh, in order to play their role in the propagation of Islam. At the same time, it is virtually important to remember that it is not enough to offer temporary sacrifices or to live righteous lives for just a few days. Rather, Allah the Almighty desires for a permanent state of righteousness amongst his people and as I have already outlined, fundamental to achieving this state is namaz. In this regard, Allah the Almighty states in, in the Holy Quran, Aqim is Salat, Inna Salata Tanha Anil Fashai Wal Munkar, Wala Zikrullahi, Wala Zikrullahi Akbar. Observe prayers. Surely prayer restrains one from indecency and many festival. And remembrance of Allah indeed is the greatest virtue. In this verse, Allah the Almighty commands Muslims to observe prayer and declares that namaz is the means of protecting a person from immorality, indecency, and all things he dislikes. Hence, to live a moral life and to be free from vice. And uh, uh, from vice, one must offer the five daily prayers at their appointed time with full diligence and sincerity of heart. The very meaning of Aqim Salah, observe prayer, is that one must be regular in namaz and offer it with complete focus and in a state of unconditional submission to Allah. In this era, a multitude of vices are prevalent in society. Sinful temptations lie at every turn and every corner seeking to corrupt and destroy the fabric of society. In particular, one major vice that I wish to warn all of you about is falsehood. Falsehood is evident at all levels of society to the extent that many people in order to fulfill their worldly desires or interests lie without thinking and consider their untruths to be very insignificant. <clears throat> Yet Allah the Almighty and the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have deemed falsehood 
to be a sin of immense gravity and harmful to both the individual and the wider society. Indeed, in a hadith, it is narrated that the Holy Prophet ﷺ stated that there are four habits and characteristics that define a hypocrite. First and foremost, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that deception and falsehood are defining characteristics of a hypocrite. For example, where a person lies and gives false testimony to get his own way, according to the Hadith. Second and the third defining characteristics of a hypocrite are to break one's covenant or pledges or to break one's promises and betray the, the trust played, uh, placed in him. In today's world, dealings and agreements exist at all levels of society, whether linked to one's personal affairs or in terms of professional and business transactions. Regrettably, it is incredibly commonplace for individuals, organizations, and nations to make firm promises, declarations, or treaties upon which they later go back on. According to Islam, the scale of one's promise or pledge is irrelevant. Even if a promise or deal is very small or low level, a person is duty bound to fulfill the terms he has he has agreed to, uh, agreed to. Otherwise, according to the hadith, he is guilty of hypocrisy. The fourth characteristic of a hypocrite, according to the hadith, is a person who uses foul language or curses when involved in an, in an argument or debate. It can never behove a believer to report to such foul or provocative language. Instead, a believer should always maintain the highest standards of et etiquette and decorum and never depart from good morals. Hence, as Muslims, we must ensure that we are free from all forms of hypocrisy and that our word is our bond. Never forget that we claim to have accepted the Imam of the age, the Prophet Messiah al-Islam, who was the most faithful servant and devotee of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as a result, we pledge to be those who always give priority to our faith over all worldly matters. Just a few moments ago, you all stood and solemnly pledged to forever give precedence to your faith over everything else. It is a pledge we make frequently at our events, yet words alone are futile until and unless they are accompanied by commensurate action. You may wonder what it means to give precedence to your faith over all worldly matters. In simple terms, it means that when it is time for prayer, one sets aside whatever else he is doing for the sake of the worship of Allah. Therefore, apart from those exceptional situations where Allah has permitted us to, to, to combine 
prayers or to offer them later. Every khadam should offer their prayers on time and whenever possible in congregation. Similarly, you must never resort to falsehood irrespective of the circumstances. You must never violate the terms of the deals or pledges you make, and nor should you resort to foul language or fail to observe proper manner and etiquette in your dealings with others. These are the essential components and characteristics fundamental to creating a harmonious and tolerant society of righteous people. If you live your lives in this way, you will be those who create a true and lasting bond with Allah the Almighty. Through your worship and at the same time, you will be amongst those who spread truth in society and serve as source of enlightenment for humanity. With regards to acting truthfully, many khudam are working professionally or have business interests. And so they must ensure they never engage in even, in even the, uh, the slightest form of deception in their business or work. For example, when it comes to their tax returns, they should declare their earnings honestly and pay whatever is due to the government. Similarly, whatever official papers or documents they require for personal or business use should be obtained honestly, and all declarations should be genuine and true. Similarly, a khadim must never resort to falsehood in terms of their chanda. If a person cannot pay at the prescribed rate, they may seek permission to pay at a lower rate, but they must not lie about their financial state because dishonesty can never lead to the blessings of Allah the Almighty. Another point I wish to make, especially to the younger Khudam and Atfal who are still in school or education, is that they must be careful who they keep company with. At, young, and at your age, your friends and those who you spend time with can easily influence you. As has been observed, if you keep poor company, you will pick up bad habits, such as lying, needlessly quarreling, or even fighting. Instead of acting truthfully and being kind and considerate. Thus, the younger Khudam and Atfal must be very conscious of their company. Make friendships with people who are sincere, who are honest, and who are not involved in any immoral or senseless activities. Furthermore, as you get older and gain more independence, do not let your guard down. Remain firm in your faith and ensure that you never fight or be abusive to others and do not use vulgar language or speak in a way that provokes others. The older Khudam must also pay heed to all of these points. Otherwise, despite having accepted the Prophet Messiah Islam and claiming to follow his teachings, you will be violating what he stood for and taught. Remember, everything the Prophet Messiah Islam taught was according to the teachings of the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet The Prophet Messiah Islam has branded falsehood and deception as a grievous sin, which lies at the root of many other evils and leads to a multitude of vices and moral 
uh, feelings. Speaking about falsehood, the Prophet Muhammad states, in reality, until a person abandons lies, he cannot become pure. Worthless worldly people believe that they cannot survive without lies. However, this is preposterous. Continuing, the Prophet Muhammad states, if one cannot survive with truth, then falsehood certainly cannot sustain a person either. The Prophet Messiah further says, it is a pity that these wretched people do not give God, give God the value he deserves. They do not know that without the grace and mercy of God Almighty, a person cannot survive, yet they consider the filth of falsehood to be their God and the means of resolving their difficulties. He says, this is precisely why God Almighty has tied falsehood to the filth of idols and mentioned it in the Holy Quran. The Prophet Muhammad states that where Allah the Almighty has expressed his hatred for idol worship, he has also expressed an abhorrence and revulsion to falsehood and declared them to be inextricably linked. The Prophet Messiah Islam further states, know for certain that we cannot take a single step, rather not even a single breath, without the grace of God. The problem <clears throat> If we cannot take even a single breath without the help and mercy of Allah, then why would an, any sane person resort to relying upon falsehood? According, accordingly, today it is the duty of Ahmadi youth to lead a campaign and movement against all forms of falsehood and deception and they must personally lead by example. Every khadim and tifal should pledge that they will never tell a lie because falsehood is equivalent to shirk, associating partner with Allah the Almighty. On the one hand, we proudly say, we are the community and people of Allah the Almighty and bow down sincerely before him. Yet, at the same time, there are some amongst us who continue to rely upon falsehood to achieve their means and desires. Let it be clear that those who rely on falsehood should not accept the help of Allah, as He will not accept their supplications. As I said, the time is now for every khadam and every tifl to pledge that they shall never utter any falsehood. The time is now for you to lead a movement to uphold the truth and become, and become those who worship Allah in the best way and whose moral standards are of the highest order. If you, our youth can reject all forms of falsehood, and remain forever truthful, then all other good morals will automatically be instilled within them. For instance, when a person forsakes falsehood, they can never be prone to deception, nor can they break their pledges, and nor can they curse or use profane language. Rather, he or she will embody those moral values which are the building blocks for a harmonious and peaceful society. Indeed, falsehood and failure to fulfill one's promises 
and covenants are the root causes underpinning the widespread injustice and disorder witnessed in today's society, be it on a small scale within the dom domestic environment or on a larger scale in the broader community. Consequently, you must ensure that you never lie or deviate even an inch from the truth. Only if we can reach those virtues, virtuous standards that free us from the shackle of uh, hypocrisy can we come to fulfill the demands of our pledge to give priority to our faith over all worldly matters. If all Ahmadi youth reach such heights, they will inspire an immensely positive transformation of society and fulfill the real expectations of a, khuda, of a, of a khadim as outlined by his Muslim out, when he profoundly stated that the reformation of a nation cannot be achieved without the reformation of its youth. Always remember that these enlightened words of his Muslim out are not just to display on banners at Ishtamaz or other Khudam events. Some years ago, I instructed Majid Khudam al to produce badges bearing this slogan and the underlying purpose was that they should serve as a constant reminder of those timeless words of a Muslim out Yet, no matter how many banners or bridges we produce, they will be meaningless and irrelevant, and irrelevant until our youth actively seek to reform themselves with the firm intention of playing their role in bettering their nations. Thus, every khadam and every tifal must strive to reform and better themselves whilst considering it their personal mission to guide their nations and their people. Every Ahmadi has a duty and responsibility to spread the message of true Islam through tabligh. So all of you, while seeking the help of Allah, must endeavor to play your, uh, your individual role in serving the mission of the promised Messiah al-Islam by elevating your spiritual and moral standards. There should never be any discrepancy between what you say and what you do. Practice what you preach. Otherwise, you will be guilty of falsehood, which the Holy Prophet ﷺ declared a sign of a hypocrite. Accordingly, every Khadam Tifal of his bearer, in fact, all Ahmadis, must seriously reflect upon the words of his Muslim Aud. You must ensure that these precious words serve not just as an impressive soundbite or slogan, but that they are always acted upon and generally reflect the moral state of our Ahmadi youth. Indeed, this slogan presents each khadam with a target and a challenge. It should inspire you to play your role in changing the world for the, for the better. Your every step must take you further along the path of righteousness as your spiritual advance and your reformation directly correlates with the success and progress of our Jamaat. I also wish to say to the younger Khudam who have just taken their first step into Khudam al that they should not think theirs is an age of 
mere recreation or fun. You have also reached an age where your thought pro, uh, processes and conduct should be maturing daily. For quite some time, I have been mentioning the early history of Islam in my, um, in my Friday sermons, during which I have narrated the incidents of many young boys from, the era, from that era. No older than you, who were able to offer extraordinary sacrifices for the sake of Islam and achieved great successes. This was all because they understood their purpose and the challenge that, they, that lay before them. They understood that it was up to them to fulfill the purpose of their life through the worship of Allah. And it was up to them to manifest the highest of morals at all times. They understood their value and worth as young Muslims. They understood the purpose of their creation. And this ensured they, play, they played an outstanding role in uh, trans uh, transforming a society defined by immorality and ignorance into a pure and righteous community, the like of which the world had never seen before and one that will forever serve as a beacon for all mankind. In this era, having firm faith in the truth of the claim of the Holy Prophet it is now up to all of you to ensure that a firm adherence to the truth define, defines every aspect of your life, whether in your personal dealings, your promises, your proclamations, or any other sense. You must keep your tongue free from immoral and or ignorant speech. Instead, Allah's praise and remembrance should always be at the tip of your tongue. From this day forth, you should seek to think and act maturely and understand your status and the true magnitude of your responsibilities. I mentioned earlier how you have all pledged to give precedence to your faith over all worldly matters, and this is not something to ever take lightly. In the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty states, masula." and fulfill the covenant, for the covenant shall be questioned about. In this verse, Allah the Almighty categorically states that each person will be held accountable for their pledges and covenants. So do not be under the misconception that standing here and repeating the words of the Khudam pledge or the, the words of the bad is sufficient. Rather, you should understand the significance of this undertaking you have made openly before the world and in the presence of the Khalifa of the time. You must strive every minute of every day to fulfill, uh, to fulfill it, knowing that one day Allah the Almighty will hold you accountable over the fact that you openly proclaimed that you would give precedence to your faith over all other things. And he will hold you accountable over your pledges of complete loyalty and fidelity with the, with the Khalifa of the time and with the Jamaat of the Prophet Messiah Islam. Thus, you must strive to fulfill this pledge for the sake of your faith, country, and nation by reforming yourselves by adopting righteous deeds, by fulfilling the rights of Allah and His creation, and by manifesting the highest morals at all times. This is the duty and the obligation of every single khadim. 
May Allah the Almighty grant you the ability to be those who safeguard their prayers and who exhibit the best moral qualities and virtues. May you be those who forever hold fast to the truth and have a hatred for all forms of falsehood. May you be those who fulfill your pledge and promises no matter how small or how big. May you work hard and strive determinedly in all good endeavors. May you fulfill the pledge you have made to spread the teachings of Islam to the corners of the earth. May you be fulfilled with a sincere passion and ardent desire to fly the flag of teachings of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Messiah Islam in every part of the world. May you be those whose tongues remain pure, and may your conduct be of the highest order so that you become noble examples of truth, sincerity, and virtue for the rest of the mankind to learn from. Surely, if and when you reach such standards, you will be those who bring about a moral revolution in society. You will be the ones who hold aloft an eternal lantern of truth, lighting up the world and lifting it out of darkness. As I said, Islam's early history bears witness to the fact that young teenagers were those who accomplished truly monumental and magnificent achievements. So never under underestimate yourselves or think you are too young to bring about a spiritual and moral revolution, change in society. Whether you are 15, 20, 30, or 40, or of any other age, grasp every opportunity to serve Islam as though it is your last. Without any shadow of a doubt, every khadam, according to their age, knowledge, and experience, can serve the cause of Islam and the mission of the Prophet Messiah Islam so long as they fulfill the rights of Allah's worship and fulfill the rights of His creation and be those who never forsake the truth and who fulfill their promises and pledges. May Allah the Almighty grant you all the ability to do so. May Allah the Almighty enable all of you to be shining stars of Ahmadiyyat and be those who come to fulfill the true purpose of their creation. May Allah continue to bless Majlis Khudam wal in every respect. Ameen. Now join me in silent prayer. I mean there, there is one announcement please uh, the Isha department department of Majus Pudamalam the United Kingdom was given the blessed opportunity to translate and publish the first half of Mashalera, Volume 1, 
The book covers the initial years of Majlis Khudamullah Ahmadiyya from the very first address at the injection, inject, uh, inception of Khudamullah Ahmadiyya in 1938, delivered by Rasul Khalifa II, Rita Anhu. This English translation comprises of 26 addresses and 12 poems in total. Rasul Khalifa, I have uh, I asked them to. Uh, I have named this collection "Beacon for the Youth" in English. May Allah enable this to become a beneficial source of material for the talim and tarbiyat of our youth. Amen. And there is an announcement about Salat Hub mobile application. Majid Farulam, the UK, has made the Salat Hub mobile application. The Salat Hub website was launched last year. And now the mobile application introduces new ways to help learn, to help learn namaz and its translation. There are interesting activities in the app that ensures uh, that that, you, that user can save their progress and unlock new levels of salat learning as they progress. Children can attain badges as well. All the badges are based upon Arabic words mentioned in the Holy Quran with the brief explanation of each word. Jamaat members of all ages can use the app. It is currently available on iOS app store and will be available soon for Android, inshallah. May Allah enable this to become a beneficial source of learning and improving the understanding of namaz, Amin. So people in Qudam and Asfal should benefit from these, uh, this app. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ya Rabbi, 
صلی علی نبی قدائما فی حاضح الدنیا و باس انسانی فی حاضح الدنیا و باس انسانی حداست کے بلا دوبا حداست کے بلا نوما لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ ہے درد دل کی دوا ہے درد دل کی دوا لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ جو پھوکا جائے گا کانوں میں دل کے مردوں کے کرے گا حشر بپا لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ یا رب صلی علی نبی قدائما فی حاضح الدنیا و بعث انسانی یا رب صلی علی نبی قدائما فی حاضح الدنیا و بعث انسانی فاق الورا بکماله و جماله و جلاله و جنانه الريان لا شك أن محمدا خير الورى ريق الكرام و نخبة العيان يا رب صل على نبيك دائما في هذه الدنيا وبعث انساني آئفو 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 دن کے ہم جن کی چاہت میں گنتے تھے دن اپنی تسکین جا کے لیے پھر وہ چہرے حویدہ ہوئے جن کی یادیں قیامت قلب تپا کے لیے آئے وہ دن کے ہم جن کی چاہت میں گنتے تھے اپنی تسکینیں جا کے لیے ہے بادا مست بادا آشا میں احمد ہے چلتا ہے دور مینا ہو جا میں احمد ہے تشنا لبوں کی خاطر ہر سمت گھومتے ہیں 